YouTube, this is the full top 16 up until the top eight happens, which will be in a separate video alongside the top deck list and grand finale. By watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and watching as long as you can, that greatly supports us, even if you have us on in the background while you're doing laundry or working out, all that good stuff. Thank you very much. And this is with the new second anniversary celebration cards. We got the new selection pack, new celebration, this and that, all that nonsense and more. Get ready, Hajime. Phantom Nightmare is the newest TCG set featuring huge support for you, Bell, and we're giving away three boxes to three lucky winners thanks to Whatnot. Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic the Gathering, and more. You could buy from anyone that's live or start live streaming yourself to sell your own cards. And if you use my link in the description below for Whatnot, you'll get a free $10 to spend on anything within Whatnot. But that's not all. By using my link in the description below and posting your Whatnot username in the comments below, you'll be entered into the giveaway for the free Phantom Nightmare box. That's what? not.com slash invite slash DK. The giveaway ends on Sunday, so make sure you're signed up before then. Dinosaur versus Labyrinth on the second year anniversary. We're getting the miscellaneous and the graveyard to then banish it to summon an Arcosaur. Arcosaur pop the baby to then search our deck for the double evolution pill, which will summon the ultimate conductor Tyranno. We have Draw and Lockbird in response to adding the double evolution pill. You no more could add any more cards in the deck to the hand. Now the baby is being triggered to summon from the deck. It would be summoning an Oviraptor. Oviraptor would want to be summoned, which would then activate to add, but it can't due to the Droll and Lockbird. So the Droll is already having an effect on this duel. We also have Impermanence, but the monsters are going to not be impermeable because the, whereas the miscellaneous source made it so we're unaffected from Impermanence. Now, I just said the Oviraptor cannot activate. It could activate its other effect of, instead of adding it from the deck to the hand, it could send it to the graveyard. So let's see that go into play. Sending a giant Rex from the deck to the grave, which could be banishable with the double evolution pill. So making sure to make the big plays under the droll. Very well done. Pop the Petite, which will then reborn the Baby Source, which will then activate to summon a Xeno Meteoris, a new level six tuner dinosaur to summon a new dinosaur boss monster, which is Dinosaur Baron to floor. Yeah, buddy. Negate anything. So now we have a negate for the impermanence. And now we have Sprite Elf to make the uh, Baron to Floor untargetable from the Impermanence, Reborn the Baby, and what could Baron to Floor do instead of Negate? It could pop. It could pop the Baby. We have Double Evolution Pill, banishing the Giant Rex to summon the Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. I'm reminding you, we're under Droll. We can't add and we're still cooking. Giant Rex being summoned, pop the Baby, activate the Baby, summon from the deck, Miscellaneous Source, two level four Dinos make a Dolka. This is a double monster negate. Now, all you gotta do is impermit, but we can't because the elf, elf protects it from being targeted. So we have monster negate, monster negate, negate anything. Both are untargetable. Ultimate conductor Tyranno, non-target flip the opponent's field face down. So we have four public disruptions here. Let's go. Got that hidden ash. So what's good, what's good? Ariana could be Ash, but I would generally save the Ash for the Big Welcome Labyrinth or the Welcome Labyrinth. Sprite Elf is reborning the Petite, which could be popped to then summon a monster from the deck, which could be the Dino Wrestler to pop a card in the field. I think that's what we're summoning, right? Yeah, buddy. So four disruptions. After using one of the disruptions, we then summon another disruption. So the Dino Wrestler will now get to pop a backer during the end phase if we want. Let's do it. Get popping, pop it. Double monster negate plus negate anything. We are left with a big welcome and impermanence. The ash was saved for the big welcome. Elf reborning the baby source. Arcosaur on summon, pop the baby, grab another double evolution pill. We could summon another ultimate conductor, Tyranno. Baby summoning the OV Raptor. Imperm is attempting to negate. We don't have a miscellaneous source to make it unaffected and we're not gonna say use our negate on it. We're just gonna hold it. Everything in attack position, 12,000 attack. Big Welcome Labyrinth will get ashed. Negate. And just like that, wiping out the Ariana. Open field, 12,000 damage. Dinosaurs taking a game one victory. I don't know why I have a game one already up there. Just like that, boom. Dinos are here. And now with Baron to floor. 
opening up a pot at E, you do generally want to chain maxi to it because they could draw into something like a side frame gear gamma, or they could draw into an ash or a called by. But if you're playing against Labyrinth, chaining maxi to the pot at E, you don't really want to do that because they don't special summon on their first turn anyway, generally. So this is the case where you would not maxi, and it's okay. Now we gotta be careful about that side frame gear gamma. If they are, it will be activatable. We're not gonna get a monster on the field. It's gonna happen. And in fact, our maxi will be protected by the gamma being able to stop something like an ash. So this is good. We got fossil dig, digging deep for that baby source in the deck here. We have Arcosaur on summon, popping the baby. As the gamma pops the popper, you will not be popping the baby as we negate. Psy frame gear gamma will be met with the max C as they're gonna draw per special summon. Now, the special summon happens at the same time, so you're not gonna draw two from that. We're gonna summon the Pankratops. Pankratops is gonna be able to pop a card in the field, but we're just gonna keep it there. Now, what's scary about the Pankratops is we do not want it to destroy our Gozen match, so we gotta keep the Gozen match a secret. Well, we have Impermanence, but Imperm does not work on Pankratops. You activate Imperm, they could chain tribute, pop the other card. That's a two for one. You do not want that to happen. So how do we deal with this? Let's find out. Torby discarding the lovely to set up a big welcome for the deck. You generally do not want to be opening up the lovely. Otherwise, you do just discard it with the furniture cards here. Now we have double evolution pill banishing from the hand engraved maxi and the giant rex to summon an ultimate conductor tyrano from the deck. You're chaining Gozen Match right now, revealing it to the Pankratops on the field? Okay, I'm gonna pop it. Pop the Gozen, we keep the Imperm and the Big Welcome safe, even though the Big Welcome would have been chainable to the Pankratops. They do have Ash to negate our Big Welcome, so we're in trouble. We just have Imperm. Triggering the Giant Rex to summon itself onto the field, continually drawing thanks to Max C. Activating the Ku Clock to then special summon our lady onto the field to block the attack. And it's just blocking damage. It will be sent to the graveyard here. We're gonna draw for that special summon. And we don't know that they have Ash. We don't know it. We want to Imperm Lady Chain to the Imperm, set a trap from the deck, which will be activatable right now. We got Dogmatica Punishment could punish the ultimate conductor Tyranno, protecting the lady from being destroyed. Well, let's do it. Thanks to the clock, activate, pop the giant Rex, sending Entis, Entis trigger, pop the ultimate conductor Tyranno, trigger the Torby because a monster left the field through a trap effect, it will summon itself back on the field. This is what you need to know when playing Labyrinth. Very well done. Get digging for our miscellaneous source here. Not activating the big welcome. I guess we are really suspecting that Ash. Interesting. So we could do instead is use Welcome to summon Lovely, but Lovely can only be summoned from the deck with Welcome. So if we don't play another copy, then it's not gonna be summonable, but then the big Welcome cannot be ashed if there's a Lovely on the field. So we're gonna find out, do we have that second copy? Do we? Probably don't, right? A lot of people play just one. I could check the website for the analytics on it. First using big Welcome to summon the Lovely from the graveyard because we probably only play one copy and thus it gets negated. We do still have our regular Welcome Labyrinth, which we can make a Muckraker. Muckraker could reborn the Lovely from the grave, so it's not completely lost by being in the grave. Setting up a Dimensional Barrier, but what do you declare with Dimensional Barrier? Ritual Fusion Synchro Exceeder Pendulum, they summon all the different types. You can't call Link, they summon a bunch of Links. You call Exceed, they could then Synchro. You call Synchro, they then Exceed. Let's go. Activating Ariana on summon, searching for the Labyrinth. Labyrinth here, swing in for that 1600. Are we making the Muckraker or what? We're not. Okay. We got the Daruma, which could flip the whole field face down. We now have Ground Xeno searching for the Xeno Meteors to then pop the baby on the resolution of the search, activating the baby to come forth and summon a monster from the deck, triggering the Meteors after a monster was destroyed to summon itself onto the field as a level six tuner as the miscellaneous source now makes our monsters on the field unaffected from all card effects. Activated card effects, that is. Grabbing that other baby. Now, this does not work. You think it works, but it doesn't work. It is unaffected from the Daruma, but anything that's not flipped face down after, let's say, being unaffected or is a Link monster, the opponent must send their cards to the graveyard, right? 
but it has to flip a card in the field face down. So if it at least flips any card in the field face down, it then does work. Well, their cards can't be flipped face down, but our cards can. So because our own cards are being flipped face down, only then and because of that, we actually send their field to the grave so it does work. It works, it doesn't work, it then works. We're also chaining Lady to set a trap from the deck. So get ready for the flip. Flip the whole field. Oh wait, you're not flipped, you then go to the grave. Gotcha. Triggering the Labyrinth Labyrinth to reborn our lovely from the graveyard. I believe that's gonna be our best summon here, chaining the Maxi in response to that summon. And you are now not gonna be able to chain any monster effects in response to our traps. Banishing with miscellaneous four cards to summon an OV Raptor from the deck, which we already activated to search our deck. We are now using Dimensional Barrier, declaring Xyz. Xyz monsters cannot be summoned, they're also negated. Using the big Welcome Labyrinth because we control a lady, a lovely that is, to spin the baby back to the hand, and let's read this card. Destroy it, then special summon one dinosaur, so it, is it going to stop it from being destroyed after moving positions to another spot on where it could? It's unaffected. <laughs> We're still under the miscellaneous, so. Yeah, uh, we uh, can't spin anything, which would have then triggered the lovely to then pop a card in the field or in the hand. Missile, uh, have you read Misk? Have you seen the Misk? And now we have a Baron de Flor. Baron de Flor, we declared exceed. You can't exceed, but I said if you declare exceed, they then special summon synchros. We're screwed. We're in big trouble. Now, the big welcome in the field is still good, right? Wrong, it actually cannot be activated because we activated the card in the grave, thus the one in the field cannot activate, thus we can't trigger the lovely, thus we can't pop, thus it looks like we're gonna lose. The Ultimate Conductor Tyranno has this neat effect of being able to, to attack every single monster on the field. Now, it looks like we summoned the Ultimate Conductor Tyranno in the wrong zone. You wanna summon it in right behind the extra monster zone because the Pentastag could give it the ability to inflict piercing battle damage on every single attack. Instead, it could deal 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. What the heck is that? We got a fusion, Transcendosaurus, using the engrave effect Ground Xeno to fusion summon into it. If this card is special summon, you could target a dino in your graveyard, add it to your hand. Then if this card was special summon for the grave, uh, which it wasn't, so we're not gonna worry about that. Recycle the OV Raptor. Come to me, we already used up our normal summon. To battle we go. 1k, 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 3k, 38, lethal damage. <laughs> okay, Pentastag not needed. Damn. Very well done to both players here. Thank you very much. Yeah, the dimensional barrier, maybe. Okay, so why you would want to use it early is we're potentially fearing if we look on to the breakdown here, let's go, let's type in dinos. The dinosaur deck type is going to be summoning, let's type in extra deck. We're afraid of them summoning the Lagia. Lagia would negate the dimensional barrier. So I, I guess we did have to activate it earlier if this is what they were going to be summoning to then negate the back row. So we did fear that. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, if we then, then declared synchro, they would have then just gone into the Lagia itself or a Dolka. Okay. Interesting. We have Rescue Ace Diablo Star. I'm assuring you that it's also playing Snake Eyes versus Pure Snake Eyes. Now this card also, I believe is releasing the TCG today. Dramatic Snake Eye Chase. Place a Diablo Star from your deck hand, your hand deck or graveyard face up into the spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. Okay. And then during the end phase, you could banish this card from your graveyard, then target one monster, treat it as a continuous spell, special summon it. I guess that would be a good way to search for the trap that would you would set from the Diablo Star being summoned in the end phase to then be able to negate any card, monster, spell, or trap during the opponent's turn. So uh, yeah, okay, let's see how that works. Discarding our rescue ace. This is why we potentially want to be using Maxi early again. We got into a situation where we Maxi early, then people started playing Gamma, then we stopped doing it, but now we're going back to Maxi early due to the Diablo Star being inherently special summoned. On summon activating to set up into the back row, our original Sinful Spoils, which, you know, that plays around Droll, so maybe the usage of Droll is now going to be going down. We had the Hydrant activating to search our deck. I'm sorry, I have music in the background. Hydrant activating to search from our deck, a Rescue Ace, which will be negated by the Ash, but the Crossout Designate will negate the negate. 
Negate! The Ash. Not even alt art. How dare you? Grabbing an airlifter, which we have not. We already used up our normal summon, but the field spell will allow an additional normal summon. Airlifter, searching for an alert, not a turbulence, because it can only search for a spell. But the alert, if we control Hydrant, we'll be able to search from the deck to the hand our turbulence. Turbulence could banish two Rescue Ace cards in the graveyard to come forth and summon. This is huge. Get ready. Turbulence could then set four cards from the deck. And one of the cards newly set will be activatable the turn it's set due to having the Hydrant on the field. Setting up Rescue, which could rescue a monster from the graveyard summoning onto the field. Extinguish, which could pop a monster in the field. Contain, which could negate a monster in the field. We're now making Hida. Hida could reborn the opponent's Ash Blossom to where it's pointing to. Thank you very much. And now making Promethean Princess, which could reborn a fire monster from our graveyard, which will be our own Hida, as we then link it off into the Amblo Whale. Now we're using the Sinful Spoils to send the Turbulence to the Grave to summon from the deck a Snake Eye Ash. Oh my gosh, what the heck? Are we just starting our combo? What is this? Add Poplar, Poplar Trigger, summon itself onto the field, search our deck for a Sinful S Spoils, which we already activated. We're gonna use the Ash to send the Poplar and itself to summon a Flame Burge from the deck, triggering the Poplar to equip itself into the back row here. Flame Burge equipping the opponent's Ash into the opponent's back row, which we could summon if we want to during the next turn, but first we're making an IP Mascarina. Triggering the Flame Burge to reborn two level one fires from the graveyard. One of them could be the Hydrant. Now, let's talk about what the heck we accomplished here. A lot. If we were to summon a monster, that will trigger the effect of the Promethean Princess to pop that monster. It's if the monster is special summoned. So we could pop that, and then we could also link with the Mascarina, which could be an Apollo USA for additional monster negates. We could pop a monster, and then that monster's name cannot be activated for the rest of the turn. So if you pop a Mirror Jade, Mirror Jade then cannot activate while in the graveyard if there's a Hydrant on the field. We then have Contain. Not only does it negate a monster, but then that monster cannot be used for a fusion, synchro, exceed, or link summon this turn. But wait, there's more. We have rescue. If we have a hydrant on the field, we could not only rescue a monster from our graveyard, but we could instead rescue a monster from your graveyard, from your opponent, taking control of it onto our side of the field. Thus, it's kind of like a DD Crow. Let's go. Oh, curry car off the top of the deck, why not? We have Wanted Spoils searching for our Black Witch here. We are discarding our Snake Eye Chase and then summon our Diablo Star. On summon, we'll be triggering to set a card, but we're gonna use Contain to contain her, negate her, and she now cannot be used for linking or synchroing. She's stuck on the field. And uh, Contain also contains her from attacking also. The monster uh, cannot attack, right? Yup, it is negated and it cannot attack and cannot be used for the extra deck. All right, so where are we now? We're using Extinguish to extinguish the Oak. Now, if we resummon the Oak, cannot activate. It's done for the whole turn. Oh my gosh. Rescue a Snake Eyes is better than pure Snake Eyes? Question mark? I don't know, is it? Damn. It, I, I'm all over the place today. Oh my, there's so much. Uh, sorry for the scores being incorrect. That is a game one victory. Let's go to game two. Normal summon. Now we're max seeing, playing around the gamma. Now because we control level one, we can add a level one, which will be the poplar. Poplar then triggers. So, oh, I mean, that works. Uh, okay, everyone should be playing this. Yup, I'm convinced. Add poplar, trigger poplar, let's go. Now, what's the best play we can make under max C? We already give, we gave them a draw and we still ha don't have a disruption. So I'm not really convinced at how good this play is until we have a disruption. Further committing under the maxi, but using our own droll to further stopping them from adding cards with the maxi also. We can't add cards either. Droll works both ways. Poplar is gonna be equipping itself into the back row. Snake Eye Ash is gonna send the Poplar to summon from the deck. The Oak, Oak will reborn from the graveyard. The Ash, Oak could then send a card we control to the graveyard to summon another Snake Eye from the deck. Discard a card to reborn the Jet Synchron as we now make a formula synchron that can't draw. On summon, activate the draw, does not work. Send the Link Rebo plus itself to then summon a Flame Burge from the deck. Flame Burge did not activate to equip a card. Instead, we're going right into a, not a Baron to floor, but a Mascarina. Okay. The Flame Burge is activating to summon two level one fires from the graveyard here. 
We're then sending the Mascarina and the Ash to then make our Promethean Princess. Promethean Princess, Reborn the Flame Burge. Flame Burge, equip the Formula Synchron. Formula Synchron, summon during the opponent's turn. Formula Synchron, then make a Baron to Floor, right? I think that's our play. But we're locked into Fire Monsters only, so we want to link that off into the Amblo Whale. Then we equip the Formula Synchron, which we could summon during the draw phase, but we cannot activate the Formula Synchron during the draw phase. We must activate it during the main phase. So let's focus, let's get ready. So let's think, the opponent has an impermanence, but they don't. So how do we play around imperm? We wait for them to activate a card, then we chain the Flame Birch to summon our Formula Synchron, but then the Formula Synchron could potentially get impermanenced. So maybe we wait for them to commit to the field with a monster before we activate the Flame Birch instead of shotgunning it right away in the draw phase. That's maybe what you would want to do. Wanted. Yeah, okay, we're doing that still anyway. Uh, this does play a little bit. Hold up. I play Flame Burge also. So <laughs> I'm going to banish my Flame Burge to negate yours from summoning the Formula Synchron, but also my own Flame Burge is negated for the rest of the turn, which is a part of our core combos. And since you cross out designated my Flame Burge, my Maxi gets to safely be activated. What is our disruption after this combo going into Baron of Floor has been stopped? Well, if you special summon, that will trigger the Promethean Princess to pop your monster. So we got about one disruption. That was a normal summon, it does not count. Adding the Turbulence with Alert, only if we control a Hydrant were we able to do that. Hydrant searching for a monster. Discarding after uh, discarding with the Diablo Star to come forth and summon. That will trigger the effect of the Promethean Princess if we want to. Are we activating? No, we're passing. We're waiting for something better to pop. Equipping the Poplar after being sent to the graveyard. We have the Sinful Spoils, which will send a card we control to summon a level one fire from the deck or hand. Summoning our Ash. Ash on summon. Search our deck for a Kurikara. You activated your Flame Burge, so I could tribute it to summon it at 3,000 attack. Come forth and summon Hita. Now, I know you don't want to trigger your Promethean Princess, but now you have to, because I'm gonna steal it if you don't. Yeah. So Hida to force out Promethean Princess. You drolled my Maxi, now I'm drolling your Maxi, so uh, drolling Maxi while playing Snake Eyes is an effective strategy because you make so many plays without droll affecting you. This is great. Called by, <laughs> we are going to finger and negate the Promethean Princess. Let's go. Hey, DK, I have a question. Why does Called By and Cross Out do not negate hand traps if you use it later after activation? Because it, it still negates it, but the lingering effects do not negate it, get negated. So if they apply a lingering effect and then it resolves, you then try to negate it after. The lingering effect does not get negated, but further max C's do get negated. So usually what a player does is if they have their own max C and a called by and the opponent activates max C, what they do is they called by to finger the opponent's max C, then they chain their own max C, so their own max C resolves, and then it applies the lingering effect, and then we negate their max C, but our lingering effect still goes through. All right, let's go. Poplar is gonna be summoned onto the field with the Hida. We are tributing the opposing Flame Birch to summon our Kurikara. The Flame Birch attempted to activate after being sent to the graveyard, but is further being negated by the cross out designate. Turbulence banished two rescue ace from the grave to come forth and summon. And if we were to have a hydrant on the field, one of our newly four set cards from the deck would be activatable. I, I have to emphasize, we're under droll. Diablo Star sets a card from the deck under droll. Turbulence sets cards in the deck under droll. We do not care about droll. And if you don't care about droll, you use droll to negate max C. This is crazy. Set, set, set. The Ambo Whale doesn't really do anything. It's supposed to be comboed up with the Promethean Princess. We are going to be linking up the Ambo Whale to make our own Underworld Goddess. Oh my, Goddess is here and just like that. Over 11,000 damage. Snake Eye Rescue Ace 2 owing pure Snake Eyes. I'm blindsided by this. I did not think Rescue Ace would be this good without its much needed support of Emergency, Preventer. Those are two key cards. It's like five cards being added to the deck. You play three Emergency and two Preventer. They are huge. 
But with the poplar coming, we are in uncharted territory here with not having the rescue ace support that's fully needed, but apparently it's not needed. We also don't have bonfire, which is also used in rescue ace, but apparently the deck is still insane. Holy moly. It's now time to get penduluming. Now pendulums don't go to the graveyard from the field, so we can't DD Crow them. Is DD Crow gonna be effective at all? Possibly not. Make a Promethean Princess. Reborn the Electromite. No, I'm gonna DD Crow it. So DD Crow is actually effective against Pendulum because we banished the Link. No resummon. Now, this is turn two. Can we win? I'm gonna look at the hand. Get that Oak out of here, sure. Not getting rid of Kurikara. So what are we gonna do where Kurikara is not really a big deal? Uh, I guess we're just gonna end the field with the Promethean Princess and not activate a monster effect, so why not? Maybe we brick. Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. No Ash. No, where art thou? Bricked up. Damn. Let's do it. Discard Poplar, Poplar then equips into the back row. Okay. So we are priority discarding, not using it for our normal summon. Interesting. Poplar into the back row, equip a sinful spoils into the back row. We could then send a card to the grave, sending the Poplar to summon from the deck our Ash. Ash could then add a Poplar, adding an Oak instead, because Oak could summon the Poplar instead. So Oak, summon Poplar, and there you go. It's kind of like a flow chart. Do we have access to Poplar? Yes, so we grab Oak. Oak then summon the Poplar, then trigger its special summon effect. And we did use up our normal summon here, so that's fine. We now have the field spell, which can equip the Flame Burge. Flame Burge into the back row. We're going to then use these two to link up into a Mascarina and use the Ash to send the Flame Burge. When do you send Flame Burge? If you have two level one fires in the grave, it also does not target. So if one of them get DD Crowed and you have three, you could just summon the other two. So come forth, Flame Burge in the grave being triggered after we summon a Flame Burge from the deck, summoning the Oak and the Ash. We're now making Promethean Princess, which could summon Flame Burge in the grave if we want. We're gonna summon a Poplar instead. Flame Burge equip a Mascarina. So during the opponent's turn, we could summon the Mascarina, then use the Mascarina during the main phase. You either use Mascarina or Formula Synchron. So this is the more Link heavy version of the deck. We're making our Sunlight Wolf. And if we summon to where the Sunlight Wolf is pointing to, it recycles a fire in the grave. If we have an Ash Blossom in the grave, let's say we negated a Max C early into our turn, which a lot of you will be doing, recycle your Ash Blossom. But here we're gonna grab the Flame Burge and let's go. What did we accomplish? We have Mascarina summonable to then link off during the opponent's turn. So that's one disruption. We also have in the graveyard Promethean Princess, which will pop a special summon monster. So we got about two disruptions here. Let's do it. Focus. Skull Crobat using up our normal summon here, grabbing a Pendulum Scale, Droll and Lockbird stopping both players from further adding. We're on summon number one, five summons that Nibiru tributes the field. Pop in our scale to grab an Oak Dragon to then add that scale back to our hand. Discard to the graveyard. We are using Diablo Star in almost every deck. Now Pendulum users are using it to grab a quick effect card that will not be activatable this turn, so we'll talk about it later. Using the Black Fang to reborn a Dark Spellcaster in the graveyard, which sometimes it can be difficult to get that Dark Spellcaster in the grave because Pendulums generally do not go to the grave if sent from the field to the grave, but from the hand to the grave, they do go to the grave. So do understand that. To battle we go, Diablo Star big enough to wipe out the Sunlight Wolf and the Amber Whale also being destroyed. When destroyed, we'll reborn the Sunlight Wolf from the graveyard. And that's the end of our turn. So we're going to not use the effect of Mascarina during main phase two. We're instead going to just normal link with it during our own turn. Very nicely done. So Imperm is dead. We're linking off the Mascarina and Sunlight Wolf into an indestructible Axis Code talker. So what happens here is the Sinful Spoils of Doom, you make it so your opponent loses attack equal to the Diablo Star, which is minus 2,500. And then if they go to zero attack by this effect, they get destroyed. But we cannot chain to the activation of Axis Code Talker, which this would have destroyed it. And if we could destroy it, we can't destroy it because the Mascarina is making it indestructible by card effect. So. On the resolution, we're going to reduce, but then not destroy. Instead, yeah, we are doing that. So we are reducing, sure. 
And now we're gonna not get poppin'. We're going to be using the other effect of the Sinful Spoil. Now, what's important about this effect is it's got two effects, but if you activate one of them, you cannot activate the other. So from the grave, you could search your deck for a level one fire, which could have been a Kurikara if you want. So every deck wants to play at least one Kurikara if you're playing the Sinful Spoils. All right, we have our normal summon with the Ash. Ash is going to be adding for the deck the Poplar. Poplar is going to be triggered, come forth in special summon. Poplar is going to be grabbing for our deck a Dramatic Snake Eye Chase. We're now going to be banishing a link to a non-target Poplar card in the field. And this cannot be destroyed because of the effect. It states that you apply both effects. You don't choose one over the other. While face up, that monster is unaffected from other monster effects in addition to reducing the opponent's field by minus 2,500. Just like that, unaffected. Ash is going to be sending the Flame Burge to summon from the deck another Flame Burge, which will trigger the Flame Burge in the Grave to summon two level one fires from the Grave. Come forth and summon. The level ones are boosted by the field spell, by the way, plus 1100 attack. The Oak on summon, reborn the Ash, and it, holy moly, level one monster beatdown. Plus 11, plus 11, plus 11, plus 11, plus 4400 attack through just the field spell. Damn. That's something. Let's go to game three. When do we ash? I don't think anyone really knows when to ash against Pendulum. So I'll tell you when you should ash against Pendulum is, I don't know. Maybe the first time it asks you to ash, you just do it. It's the only deck I don't know when to ash. Any other deck, I'll tell you when. But uh, I think in every single scenario where you ash against TTK, he plays right through it anyway. So I don't really know. And uh, wait, that wasn't really that crazy, but we have Maxi. We have the ability to pop a card in the field. Okay, get popping. Maxi, but we got we got all the ways to stop. We got cross out designate. We have called by. We had Ash earlier if we would have held on to it. Now, how well can Snake Eye play through a single disruption? First wanted, adding a Diablo Star from our deck to our hand. Activating the field spell, which is more efficient with the Diablo Star. Interesting. Equipping the Poplar to then send the Poplar for Diablo Star to then trigger the Poplar to then equip itself into the back row again. Activating. Now, I'd say we're chain link blocking the Diablo Star by doing this, but what are we blocking from? You already can't ash this. I guess we're blocking a Gamma or you're blocking a Baron to floor. If it were to be on the field, it would not be negated. So come forth and equip. So pretend there's a Baron of Floor in the field. It's summon, can't negate. It's activation, can't negate because we blocked it. And now we got these Sinful Spoils, Original Sin. We're going to send that to the Graveyard by popping it. Get rid of it, triggering the Electromite because a Pendulum Scale has left the field. We're going to draw a card, maybe drawing into a Hand Trap that we need. That's our search. And another Max C that we're already, uh, it was already negated, damn. Now, the original Sinful Spoil is going to be returned back on the deck to the effect of the Wanted to randomly draw here. To battle we go, big enough to take out the Electromite. This is a really basic duel. What is going on? The Snake Eye Chase effect equips a Diablo Star, then summons it during the end phase, but we already triggered her effect this turn, so I'm not really sold on this card. I'm not sure how good it is. We're going to banish it. Uh, oh! That was okay. Instead of summoning the Diablo Star, could summon any card in your back row. Okay, that, that's interesting. Grabbing the Sinful Spoils, Original Sin for next turn. Still wasn't that crazy. Like, uh, okay. We have the Pendulum, you know, it's like, what are the disruptions here? I, I can't really say. There's there's nothing. What What is our, we, we ended on nothing. This, this is not good. I, we can't pretend like this is crazy. But nothing, this is nothing. We have Wisdom Eye popping itself, searching our deck uh, while setting up a double iris, triggering the effect of the Pendulum Graph to then search in the deck. We're going to pop the Call of the Grave, forcing it to be used to banish in the Grave the Electromite, which could have potentially been recycled, let's say, with the Sprite Elf or the Promethean Princess, whatever play we want to do. The Electromite is limited to one, so that does hurt a bit. We have the Black Fang plus the Oaf Dragon adding back an extra deck monster to our hand as we now Pendulum Summon any amount of monsters we want from the hand. 
By keeping one spot open, at least that will trigger the harmonizing to summon a monster from the deck. We do have a Baron to Floor play right here. The field spell is triggered from you summoning to summon a monster from our back row onto the field, which is not turning into disruption. Okay. She triggers to set a card to be used next turn. That's not activatable right now, and that negates anything. It can negate a pendulum scale, a back row, a monster, but now there's a Baron to Floor. Baron de Floor is here as we have the Time Star Magician. Time Star Magician activating to search our deck for. Huh? It searches for Diablo Star? Any dark spellcaster monster, it adds it from the deck to the hand. Okay. We have the Black Fang Magician popping itself to then summon a dark spellcaster from the graveyard. I mean, this is a dark spellcaster deck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is where Diablo Star is supposed to be in Pendulums. Good job, Pendulum. Foolish Burial sending from the deck to the grave, limited to one water enchantress to then banish and grab our right of Erezmir. A non-target pop a card in the field. We have negate anything. We have negate a monster. And if the scythe is popped by the DPE, it then reborns to then lock him that out of the extra deck, which we're going to have to call by, which I said gets negated. So I, I think this is checkmate. What are we drawing to? Oh, TTT. That's great. We're chaining Ash to the Martha, which is... Martha is like branded fusion, where you want to save your Ash for the Martha. So very well done here. Called by to finger the ash. Griffin? No, we didn't Griffin because we want to use Griffin to protect our scythe play. Interesting. Despite how powerful Martha is, Martha can't use the extra deck if we summon scythe. So let's see how this pops off. This is going to be very interesting. And if we don't respond to the summon, they're going to activate TTT right away. But then, you know, we have Griffin and negate. What are we doing? We're doing it right away, right away. Pop the scythe, pop the Martha, activate the scythe, come forth and summon. We're going to chain Exosister packs to search our deck for an Exosister card, which will be the Stella. Stella can special summon after being added. And now Scythe will be activating. You cannot use the extra deck. Now, if your opponent summons a card from the graveyard or moves a card from the grave, it will trigger. So the Scythe is a mandatory effect. Yeah, that messes things up. Mandatory trigger, despite it being the turn player of Exosister, generally the turn player would activate first. So they would be chain link one, the scythe would be chain link two, thus you can't use the extra deck, but because it's a mandatory effect versus an optional effect, it's gonna be on the lower chain link, and then the Elise will be higher, using the extra deck before you're not allowed to use the extra deck. Let's go. And the Stella. So double use the extra deck against scythe. That is crazy. We have Fog Blade, which can only negate one of them. The other will still summon a monster from the extra deck. So you get negated as I think we're going to summon a Macallus for a banish, right? Get banish in. Macallus is getting ready to banish. Now, what's crazy about Macallus banishing is if we activate Triple Tactics Talent, they activate Griffin to negate. The Griffin must be shuffled back in the deck in order to negate, and it doesn't do so as a cost. Thus, we could use Macallus to chain Vanish in response to trying to negate, and then it doesn't get negated. Let's go! Activate to negate. Maca Maca Macallus. No? Okay. Uh, we forgot to do that. We'll use it to banish something else instead. Sure. Now we're going to banish. Uh, we're first going to search, searching for the Returnia. Then we're going to banish DPE instead. Is banishing DPE better than banishing the Griffin, which is then recyclable with the Fateful Adventure next turn? You know, uh, we can't just say this is a misplay. It was a, a choice. We chose. Take out the Scythe. And main phase two, Elise, come forth and special summon. We're locked out of the extra deck. We can't make any more extra deck plays. Returnia could banish a card on the field or in the graveyard, plus perform and exceed. So this will be quite interesting. We're going to do so in the standby phase, getting rid of the Fateful Adventure before it activates. So we're not grabbing back our Griffin. And then we're performing that Exceed. As I said, it does so on Resolution. Mikalison Summon for the rest of the turn is going to be able to banish a card in the field or in the grave. Now, you don't have to banish the Draco back. You could banish the token 
which then the Draco back falls off, thus it does not resolve, and the Macallus does not get sent back. We're instead gonna banish the Fog Blade. This is really interesting. We're gonna allow the Macallus to get spun back, just so the Fog Blade cannot be sent to the graveyard, which it was stuck on the field anyway, to then reborn a monster from the graveyard. Is this correct? I don't know. Hmm. Banish Fog Blade. You know, again, this could banish a card from the grave. Maybe banish the Malicious instead would have been better, right? Chain Banish Malicious, which we could have done, as Malicious is now summoning Malicious to then link this off into Rusty. Rusty will send a Phantom Knight card to equip a Phantom Knight card into the back row. You know, not really equip, but it's face down. We are then using Denier to return Malicious back in the deck to use the Malicious in the grave to summon the Malicious return back of the deck. Cloak's gonna boost up the Rusty. We're going to link this off into a Chair Benny. Benny's gonna send a level three monster from the deck to the grave, which will be our Stained Greaves. We're gonna use Cloak Banish to search our deck for a Boots. We need a Phantom Knight on the field, which we do. Scale, because a card was banished from the grave, it will activate to summon itself onto the field as we then use it with the Boots to make a Break Sword. Break Sword to where the Rusty's pointing to will trigger the Rusty to pop a card in the field, taking out the Macallus. And it looks like we have game. 8,600 damage, lethal damage, finish him. All right. Maybe they're still playing something new. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, okay. Maybe we have to hard open the Diablo Star. We'll find out in the next duel. Game number two. Begin. You have no hand traps. Huh? <laughs> Exo Sister, turn one, set two, back row pass. Well, the Vadis could still summon an Exo Sister from the deck. So that is something. Okay. But we have to wait for the opponent to manipulate a card from the grave in order to want to activate the Vadis, which would then trigger their effects. Now, we don't have to actually wait for them to manipulate a card if we have Call by the Grave. So we could summon a Martha, then we could banish a card from the graveyard to trigger the Martha to go into a Macallus to then banish a card in the field. This is something. We got something. Right of Air's Mirror into the Fateful Adventure here. We have the Reinforce of the Army grabbing the Boots. Remember, our normal summon monsters cannot activate their effects, so we got to special summon them. We're gonna grab Griffin, discard in the boots, which could banish to grab a fog blade. Griffin Rider is here, but we're gonna chain special summon with Vadis. If we wanted to get spicy, what you would do is you would call by the grave, and then you would chain link to Vadis. So the monster summoned would then see the monster leave the grave through the effect of called by, but it would just be Martha, but then Martha would be negated by the Griffin. So we're in a situation. This is not so good. There's the Martha. And that is the Griffin Rider, which is ready to negate the Martha. Mag, we have Ash negating the Fateful Adventure searching for the Draco back, which could spin a card in the field back to the hand. Okay. We are attacking. We're going to banish the boots to trigger the Martha using Griffin to negate the called by the grave. Thus, the Martha will not be triggering. Okay. Goodbye, Griffin. You are negated. The token now goes through, wiping out the Martha, but the Elise is still there, waiting for you to manipulate the graveyard in any way, sending the Malicious and Denier, making our DPE. We could non-target pop the Elise, and then we could move cards in the grave. Huh? We're called by the graving? Uh, then we're gonna have to pop the Elise because we're triggering her effect right now. We're popping the called by and the Elise. So we activate called by so that we could pop it with the DPE to make the most out of our pop. Okay. So now we don't have to pop our DPE, worrying about the opponent drawing into a called by the grave of their own. Maybe a DD Crow could banish the DPE. So keeping it on the field. Very nicely done. Boots searching for a fog blade. Now we have double monster negate plus pop any card on the field. But evenly match is gonna banish everything but one. Evenly match. DPE, uh, okay, what are we doing? We're, I guess we're popping ourselves plus the Fog Blade, then keep the Fog Blade on the field. Well, actually, with evenly match against a token, you don't get to choose. You lose your whole field but the token because tokens cannot be banished face down. They can only be banished face up. So we're gonna chain Droplet to the DPE, negating its effect to pop the token. Thus, everything's banished but the token and we really wanted the Fog Blades in the graveyard so it could reborn the Phantom Knights, which they're now gonna be banished face down alongside the DPE being banished face down. Okay, making sure to send the evenly matched so that the one token, okay. Let's go, let's go, very well done. Negate DPE, 
goodbye to everything but that token. I, that right there was the game winning play. I don't know how we're going to recover from that. We're going to be grabbing an Irene special summoning because her sister is on the field and or in the graveyard using the Sophia to draw a card, reveal the Stella Returner to then draw into our Max C as we now make Castapel. Castapel, uh, if it searches for a Martha, didn't we finger Martha last turn? So she's still negated. She's actually not going to work. Detach, so we remember that. We're grabbing an Elise instead. Elise special summon, Sakitama it, with the additional summon as we now make our Mikalis. Mikalis going to be searching for an Exosister spell or trap, which will be the Vadis to summon two Exosister from the deck. We have the effect to banish a card on the field or in the grave. Goodbye to the Malicious as we now make Magnifica. Magnifica is non-target banish which could then lead into a targeting banish. So this is banish two cards, plus summon two monsters from the deck. This fusion destiny is probably dead. I think so. On the summon, non-target banish as we scoop it up, that devastating evenly match into the droplet abusing the token mechanics. Let's go. We have evenly match again. <laughs> oh God. Right of air's mirror versus evenly match, but we're generally gonna have a griffin to negate the evenly match. Begin. Yes, there's a lot of snake eyes in today's event. It, this is just the one match where, uh, where are the new cards? I don't know, they, these two random decks made top 16. DPE is gonna have to be summoned during the next standby phase. So if we top deck into a DD Crow or a called by, we get completely countered. Did not top deck into an out for the DPE, come forth and summon. Ew, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We're entering the battle phase. Uh-oh, so the evenly matched play is gonna happen right here, right now. We have no way to negate it because the Ash negated the fateful adventure search of the Griffin, which would have negated the evenly match. Is the game over? At the start of the battle phase, you can see the S under the battle phase. You need to show the battle phase details on in the menu and you need your toggle on. With the toggle on in the battle phase, not the end of the main phase that a lot of people would screw that up, we're gonna get popping. Pop the scythe, activate, DPE, activate. And uh, you know, technically we could pop it in response to the evenly match. Evenly match would banish everything but the fog blade and then the scythe would summon afterward, then locking them out of the extra deck. So let's get Scythe in, just like that. Could not use the extra deck. We're leaving Rusty on the field. We don't even need that Fog Blade, okay. Do we have a Phantom Knight card? In the yeah, we have Fog Blade in the grave to reborn the Break Sword to trigger the Rusty to pop a card in the field. And again, they can't use the extra deck. So what are they even doing? I think we're waiting for a back row to pop. Yeah. Banish, summon Break Sword. Pop the droplet, trigger the scales. Scales come forth and summon. The advantage here is insane. Get popping. Goodbye to the droplet, as we said, and boy, are we in a good spot. Get discard a card to then send a Phantom Knight card from the deck to the grave. DPE reborns, it's non-target pop. St oh, that does double trigger the Exo Sisters. The mandatory effect of having to summon a Destiny Hero from the graveyard here is mandatory, right? Just double checking, uh, you know, to you activate the effect. Yeah, you did have to summon after activating it during their turn. And we can stop one of their exceeds because they do have to be used as an exceeds material in order to perform the exceed summon. So get pop on one, but then the other one goes through and we don't have a way to stop it from doing things. The Asso feel is going to be activating on summon, so neither player can activate card effects in their graveyard this turn, but we could still, within the same chain, activate the DPE to summon during the next turn. But the Malicious will not be activatable, and yeah, no more graveyard effects. Now the Asso feel also, it states that uh, it's dead, it's gone. Open field gets swinging, the Break Sword can't really go into an efficient Zeus here but we still have DPE non-target poppage. Now, if we could get DPE to activate within the main phase, we could use triple tactics talent, but how? <laughs> how do we get them to activate the DPE so we could TTT in a draw two? It's not gonna happen. And just like that, 
Exosister Falls. Yes, Darth knows exactly what to do. Summoning the Alibird to search for the branded fusion here so the Droll Lockbird cannot be activated. Now, when you have TTT, it does change things a bit. Maybe you would want them to draw on the main phase so that you could use Triple Tactics Talent to look at the hand and then rip the ash out of their hand. So actually, uh, maybe we outplayed ourselves because yeah, draw and then remove ash and then branded fusions protected. So maybe we screwed up. Maybe that wasn't ideal. So, you know, you don't want things to be definitive rules. You want to be open-ended always on your plays. Don't always draw a phase because, you know, triple tactics talent could have been used. We're going to draw and then the draw is going to be used now. Okay. And now we just have Super Poly. Super Poly with the Alibur is going to require a light or dark on the field. Otherwise, we're going to require them to have two of the same attribute. Or if we're extra spicy, we have the Dragon Knight Draco Equest. Now, Droll itself is enough to completely shut them down pretty much. We're now going to be, as we said, with a Dark Monster and Alibur, using them together to make the Koritis. Now, if we waited for them to cook, if the Droll were to have not stopped them, this would have used a Dragon Synchro, which is the Borlod Savage Dragon, and a Warrior Monster, which is the Baron de Floor, which both of them cannot negate this summon. But the Baron de Floor would have been summoned first, and it would have popped the Super Poly before it would have even been activatable. It's better being used as a turn two player than setting a turn one. All right, come forth and summon the Stealthy. Stealthy is going to steal the TTT and use it. Thank you very much. Looking at the hand, returning the Mercurier back into the deck. Couldn't draw because of Droll, unfortunately. I think we would have much more preferred to do that. Nadir, sir. Oh, what a top deck. You are disgusting. Send the Garura ad back to Maximus. Activate to draw a card. Banish the Garura to summon the Maximus. Send two more cards from the extra deck to the grave. Holy moly. Or we'll negate. Just like that. You are negated. Foolish Burial sending an Albion Shrouded Dragon, which will send a branded card from the deck to the grave, which will be the Retribution to add back the branded fusion in the grave back to the hand. And we negated Maximus. But we can't use branded fusion because we can't use the extra deck. We're going to have to use it next turn because Nadir Servant locked us out of the extra deck. Wipe out the box, smack him with the Coritis, and we're, uh, I mean, uh, do we lose? Because uh, where's our disruption? Uh-oh, that's a one-card combo starter to Wham Bam, thank you, man, lethal damage. Let's speed this up. Summon, because we have a super heavy. We could search with our Benki. We're going to link off with the Soul Piercer searching for our Wakashi. We are going to then discard a Piercer to reborn the Piercer to where the Scareclaw is pointing to. Scarecrow, that is. We are going to be reborning, summoning from the deck that is the Scales, which reborns in the graveyard. We now have the Ancient Gear Ballista, which adds the gear box, which we already have in the graveyard, so it does nothing here. Soul Piercer is searching for the booster, which could summon itself onto the field. We have already used up our normal summon. So we are going to use the other effect to get rid of the Benki scale so that we could use the Wakashi to play another Benki from the deck to then summon itself onto the field. Okay, that's interesting. Booster get boosting itself, and then as we link this off into a Unicorn. Unicorn on summon will be discarding the wagon to spin back the Coritus. Now, Coritus, if it leaves the field through a card effect, it activates to summon an Alvast in the deck to fuse with the opponent's field into a Mirror Jade. But it only activates if it leaves the field into a public knowledge area. By returning it to the private knowledge, it does not activate. So thus, no Albaz and no Mirror Jade. So back to the extra deck you go. Alibur still triggers to summon itself onto the field but we have only just begun. Wakashi, since we got rid of the Benki with the Ballista, which, gotta write that down. That was a really good way to get rid of it. As we now make the Excel Synchro Stardust, reborning level two tuner from the graveyard. I'm trying to cast over my dogs barking. Wakashi equipping into the back row as we are going to be able to then Pendulum Summon. We now have Baron de Floor. Baron de Floor is here, ready to pop a card in the field plus negate anything. And now we're Pendulum Shokaning just the Wakashi as we can now make an Axis Code Talker. Axis Code Talker plus the Baron de Floor is over 8,000 damage plus wipe out the entire field, which we don't need to do because the Maximus is at zero attack here. Lethal damage. Dogs are excited. Wait, he has Calamity in the extra deck? Oh my gosh, what the heck? I, I totally missed it. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay, that's crazy. It locks them out for the whole turn. 
fusion deployment reveal a fusion summon a material from the deck as i believe we're going to be chaining maxi to this yes we will gamma's generally not being played in branded so it's kind of safe to maxi them come forth summoning a cartesia cartesia will want to be further special summoning but not under maxi i'm thinking we're going to be sir randomly drawing into a Nadir Servant as the Quem sends a Branded Fusion from the deck to the grave to then use Retribution to add it in the grave back to the hand, but the Ghost Bell negates the add from the grave. Negate! Which we probably were going to Special Summon further under your Max Seed. So you lose a draw, but, you know, I guess I don't have the Albion Sanctifier, which is what I think we would be going into. Now, the Droll is negating the Garura because it's triggering within the window of the Droll being activatable after adding a card from the deck to the hand. So no draw for you. Gotcha. Now, a lot of people are confused on Droll. It's not a trigger effect. It is a quick effect. Maximus banishing the Garura. It's going to send extra deck cards to the graveyard. Now, it's crazy about the Albion is it plays under Droll. It does not matter that we can't add. We're going to set it onto the field instead. And the Titan Clad, instead of adding, we could summon it onto the field. So Titan Clad summoning the Albaz. Albaz and Cartesia will be turning into a Mirror Jade on the ending fusion after fusing into something else before then. We also have the Branded in Red, which can make a Chimera to pop cards in the field. We have so much disruption here. It's quite disgusting. So let's see. We are going into the Albion instead of a Mirror Jade. Okay. But we could use Brandon Red to go into the Mirror Jade, add back the Albaz, using with our hand and the Mercurier. Okay, we're going a little bit different here, not using the Courier, Mercurier for a monster in a gate. And are we even making a Mirror Jade? Huh? Mercurier activating a search for an Albaz monster or a Fallen Albaz itself. Grabbing a kit. This is all during the opponent's turn. Oh, you got Puppet. Oh my gosh. Gangrene. <laughs> so we don't even go for Mirror Jade if we got the cheese. And that cheese is Puppet. Puppet, I forget what format it's banned in. Either TCG or OCG, this card is banned, right? I, or is it? I, am I speaking out of my butt or what? I don't know. We're going to be summoning the gimmick Puppet onto the opponent's field. And then they cannot summon for the rest of the turn except gimmick Puppets. And no one's playing gimmick Puppets because they suck. It's not, what What are cards are banned? I forget, the just the expulsions banned, right? Yeah, so I guess Puppet is legal in every, <laughs> we scooping, no thank you. All right, do not max C, don't do it. Didn't do it, did not do it. Yes, very well done. Add the Soul Piercer, and we're gonna even be waiting for a commitment to an effect to special summon, not even maxing early. So if we max the early, what's going to happen? They're going to make a Baguska. So it's draw one and then deal with Baguska, which we have the out to Baguska. We have Albaz and Super Poly, but we're still waiting. So Piercer grabbing the motorbike. When are we max seeing? Discard to search for the Peacemaker. We're discarding a special summon. Now we're max seeing. There we go. Just like that which now it's a draw two to go into Baguska. So instead of draw one Baguska, draw two Baguska. So I'm thinking, no, uh, waiting was actually a good idea. What do y'all think? Uh, wait to draw two instead of draw one. Sure. Now Baguska is going to force every monster into defense and any monster activated while on defense will be negated. Send the tragedy, which will activate after being sent to the grave to search our deck for an Alibur, but we probably want to use our normal summon on Albaz, right? Super poly with this current field? Huh? Oh my gosh, that's a Moo Dragon. Yeah, it's an Earth and an Earth. So even not only did we draw two with our Maxi by waiting for them to summon the Scarecrow, but it also made the Super Poly live. Uh, yeah, okay, damn. Wow, yeah, that's a huge outplay. Maxi and Super Poly used perfectly as the Alibur now grabs the Branded Fusion. We couldn't affect Valor the Alibur. Why? Because it's untargetable. Because Moo Dragon that we used the Baguska to make turned itself into dark, and dark monsters cannot be negated. Or targeted, that is. So we are going to be summoning another dark monster that also could not be effect Valored. So dark into dark after making dark untargetable. Well, we could negate this. This is when we will negate. So discard. Uh, finally, I could target your monster. That is going to be a... Negate. 
We have Thrust. We can thrust a card into the back row. We got Triple Tactics Talent here. Looking at the hand. Get out of here, Scales. Scales would reborn a monster from the grave. Can we deal with lethal damage? And we got lethal. <laughs> Just like that, 8,700 damage. Very well played from both players here. Good job, Branded Despia, for knocking out Super Heavy Samurai. Now, can we see some new meta decks, please? Where are they at? Where are they at? Pot of P digging deep, limited to one. We got it in our opening hand. Dynamorphia in the top 16 for some reason. What is going on? Snake Eyes lost to Labyrinth and Dynamorphia. Fossil Dig digging for the Therizia that we already had. Therizia does not add. It sets it onto the field, so it plays around a Drone Lockbird. Imperm Negate, that is a great negate. We pretty much have all the traps that we need. So the issue with these back row cards that we have to play through is that the Fair Flames can essentially non-target spin the entire field of monsters back in the deck. And then we're going to be summoning a giant dinosaur that states that your monsters cannot activate their effects on the field. And we also have negate any monster effect to the Dynamorphia intact, which we saved. We did not negate the Ariana on purpose. Dynamorphia Domain, half our life points, come forth and summon. Kentragina, Kentragina, copy the effect of the Domain. Banish it. Now down to 2,000 life as we Shokan into the Rex term. This is going to make it so monsters that are 2,000 attack or higher cannot activate. We have Dynamorphia Intact, which is generally saved for Ash Blossom. This is why you would not want to use it on the Ariana until you made sure that you can't get Ashed. But now that we're safe from Ash, we're going to negate the Torby from setting up a trap from the deck. Not that we really need it, it probably would have been a field spell since we already have both Welcome Labyrinth and Big Welcome Labyrinth. We're just further reducing our life so that the Fair Flames will be even more effective here. So what do we do? What do we do? We are summoning our Therizia, searching and setting up an alert, which could summon up to two monsters from the grave. The lovely Labyrinth will not be able to trigger to pop a card in the field due to the Rex term turning it off from activating. In the damage step reduction, reduced down to 250 attack. 6 250 life afterward. The alert cannot be activated. The turn it has been set. Not enough to force our activation of our welcome cards as we now do so during the end phase. We are going to big welcome our lady, return back the Ku Klok. Ku Klok could be discarded to activate a newly set trap this turn. The Torby's being triggered to summon itself onto the field. We're activating the Ferret Flames, which will force the lady back into the deck. Now, Torby is zero attack, does not care, just gonna chill there, sure. Torby discarding itself and the Ku Klok to set up a Welcome Labyrinth by discarding it, sending itself from the field or hand to the grave. Now we have Welcome Labyrinth, re -sum summoning from the deck, it can't summon from the grave as we now have a Lady. With Lady on the field, we can now use the Big Welcome to deal with the Dynamorphia Rex term, and we don't have a way to stop it. Solemn Strike could not stop it. It only stops a special summon or a monster effect. Rex term is gonna reduce the Lady, and we're also gonna chain alert summon from the grave. So the Lady's gonna go down to 63 attack. Yes, 63 attack. Reduce to 63 as we double summon from the grave. Now the Torby and the Lady can make a Chaos Angel. Chaos Angel can banish a card in the field. And the Psalm Strike is not even usable because we don't have 1500 life to pay. It's no good. Now there is a Dinomorphia Fusion that allows the Psalm Strike to be activatable, but it's not a very good one to summon. So we generally never do that. What are we doing here? Ariana on summon, searching for a Labyrinth Labyrinth. We are making the Chaos Angel play as I explained earlier. We're gonna be banishing a card in the field. Goodbye to that dead Psalm Strike. Lethal damage, well, the Dynamorphia intact is activating. It states that while you're 2,000 life or less, if you would take battle damage, you could banish this card from your graveyard. You take no battle damage from that battle itself. But then we have another attack. Dynamorphia Therizia is going to be banishing a trap from the grave to reborn a Diplos. We could not stop double lethal. <laughs> Ain't no way. What the? Yeah. Uh, end our turn. Uh, yeah, that, that was our turn one. Pass. Back to you. Uh, you know, that, that's a pretty good turn one Labyrinth, having a big welcome Labyrinth plus the Labyrinth Labyrinth, which could pop a card in the field. Okay. Non-target pop. What? What? 
Oh, you know, Dimension Shifter's still activatable. Any card sent to the grave will be banished instead. So we just turned off the ability of Effect Veiler being able to negate. But now it can negate. It's, it's back. It's ready to negate. Okay. Now, during the end phase, we're going to have Ash negate the big welcome, but we have another big welcome to be used during the other turn, which we could normal summon Veiler if we want to then summon Lovely to then return back Veiler to then pop a card from the hand if maybe we want to do that. We're not going to do that. Ash is going to negate again. Back to back, Ash negate the big welcome mate. Okay. And now we just have Imper, which will be able to negate the Therizia. Oh my gosh. Droll Maxi Shifter. We got Dogmatica Punishment. Okay. Fossil Dig, which will search for the Therizia, which could be negated by the Veiler or the Impermanence. Activate to put into the back row our Dynamorphia Trap. No good. Negate with the Veiler. We do have Dogmatica Punishment to not only pop the monster, but pop a back row card if there were one. So we're just going to get rid of it right now just to get Garura into the grave. Instead of pop and we could draw a card into our third and final Big Welcome Labyrinth. Oh my Jesus. <laughs> you all want Boomer, Classic, Yu-Gi-Oh? There you go. The Play Labyrinth or Dynamorphia. Rizia on summon getting negated again. We even have the backup infinite impermanence to negate if we needed to. I don't think so. Smack him for 15. We're not using the Dogmatica Punishment. Maybe we're not playing another Garura. Do we have room for it? We do. We could. <laughs> and we are. Send the second copy of Garura. Pop the Rizia just to draw a card. Now at the Ku Clock on the field, we could summon our lovely return back the clock, trigger the lovely, pop a card in the hand, then add the big welcome from the grave back onto the field, or even add a Dogmatica Punishment back in our back row. We are drawing due to the max C. Goodbye to the Droll, randomly getting popped. We are choosing the Dogmatica Punishment instead of the Big Welcome. Big Welcome, while in the graveyard, is disruption. It could spin any card in the field back to the hand, including back row during the end phase. So this is why we really have to bluff our Dynamorphia Frenzy so that it does not get spun back. Big Welcome could spin back the Droll, triggering the Lovely to then randomly pop one of the two back row cards here. It's a 50-50. Coin flipping the back row pop and pop in the correct one. Dynamorphia Frenzy has now been stopped. Damn. Taking that 29, so now the Ferret Flames is activatable, but we did not activate it at the end of the ba battle phase and then spin back the lovely back in the deck, stopping it from setting a big welcome. I feel like we feel like we're maybe uh, dead. Yeah, we're probably, uh, I think we're feeling defeated. So, you know, we're probably not micromanaging as much the most optimal plays here as it like does it really matter <laughs> does does it even matter it does not matter we're done stake your soul reveal a fire to summon a fire from the deck we're going to be chaining maxi to that even though we revealed ash to negate that maxi negate i have not seen a single alternative art ash blossom in today's tournament what does that mean Raise it on summon, activating to grab ourselves our Vanquished Soul Jiao Long. Reveal the Jiao Long to trigger the Jiao Long to come forth and summon. Jiao Long needs to reveal double fire in order to search our deck for any Vanquished Soul card. We have Rock of the Vanquisher now being summoned to add the Raisin and the Graver back to the hand, but we're missing another fire. So we're going to activate the Noble Arms Museum to add a Noble Arms Durendal. Durendal will search for that second fire. Are we really just playing this? to add raisin because that that's something it does work okay raisin being added from the deck to the hand with the durandal now we can activate the jail long reveal double fire to search for our mad love mad love being summoned here adding a dust devil from our deck what are our plays does this even do anything it does nothing. We have no Diablo Star to send to then negate anything. So it's just a bluff. We have the ability to flip a card in the field face down, or at least two of them, or maybe even three of them. We could potentially use Raisin to wipe out the same column of a monster. So you want to be careful with your column summoning. And we have the Jalong, which could search for a Caesar, which could potentially be something. Also, the Mad Love could spin a monster in the field back to the hand. Let's see if we could play through all that disruption. 
Jao Long, making sure to reveal early. The Rock of the Vanquisher could only be used within the main phase, so we did search for Caesar as I thought we would. Summoning Ash in the same column as the Link, forcing them to destroy it if they were wanting to do that. Adding the Poplar. Poplar will then be triggered, special summoning itself onto the field, activating to search for a Snake Eyes card, which will be the field spell, not the original Sinful Spoils. We're now going to be flipping the entire field face down after changing the battle position of the Mad Love. Activating the field spell, equipping into the back row our Flame Burge. Sending to the graveyard our Poplar to summon our Diablo Star Black Witch, triggering the Poplar to put itself into the back row here. As we also set up a Diablo Star Sinful Spoils card from the deck, which will be the ability to summon a level one fire from the deck. We're going to send the Poplar to summon from the deck an Oak. Oak could reborn the Poplar from the graveyard back onto the field. We could then use the Oak to send the Poplar to summon a Flame Burge from the deck. Very well done, Flame Burge. Activating to put the Rock of the Vanquisher into the back row. Before it goes there, we're gonna activate summon a monster from the hand or add from the grave to the hand. We are choosing the special summon effect of from our hand, summoning our raisin into a column where there are no monsters, but it is ready to potentially wipe out an extra deck monster. Because you summoned, you triggered my field spell to summon my other flame burge onto the field. Come forth. Snake Eyes is uh, doing a lot, I think. This is a lot of special summoning. Flame Burge has yet to use its effect of when sent to the graveyard to reborn two level one fires from the grave. So we're gonna link summon this up into the Hida, into the same column as the Raisin, though it could have been summoned over here safely to then summon a fire monster where it's pointing to. We had the Flame Burge reborning the Poplar and the Oak. We now have Caesar Valius returning the Mad Love to come forth and summon. Is it activatable though? Could it non-target pop a card in the field? By revealing fire, earth, and dark, yes it can, it is activatable. Raisin is wiping out the car. Like, why did we do this? Why? Why couldn't we not have Hita here, summon over here and there? Huh? We lost two monsters for what? We wanted Hita to die? If Hita dies, you add a fire from your deck to your hand. Is this add Kurikara? Was this a bait? Did we trick the opponent into destroying our Hida? It made it even more, uh, you know, the, a bigger pop by putting the poplar behind it to like, come on, pop it, pop it. I don't think so. No, I, I, I don't think we baited him. We're now making the Relinquish Anima to not summon the Caesar. Uh, why didn't we suck up Caesar? Caesar was a suckable card. It, where uh, y y I guess it would have made itself unaffected, but then it would not have been able to pop a card in the field. So it would have at least force the activation of the Caesar. Okay, you know, that's an option. Sending the Diablo Star from the deck to the grave to summon the Magician's Souls as we could send the Raisin and the Field Spell to draw two. That's something. Get that draw two. We draw on like crazy. Wanted grabbing a Diablo Star, which is not summonable as since we already did using the Wanted to return back of the deck the Sinful Spoils to draw a card. Into battle we go, Caesar revealing the three attributes to take out the Flame Burge, which has already activated its effect to reborn two monsters from the grave. We're now going to further link this up into Dark, the Dark Charmer, to summon a Dark Monster from the opponent's graveyard to where it's pointing to, which there is none. What did Snake Eye accomplish at the end of the turn? Nothing. Nada. We have nothing. There's not some secret effect in the grave. There's nothing activatable on the field here. This is nothing, nothing. Okay, so we should see Vanquish Soul completely wipe up this field and then attack for game. We're gonna non-target pop, cross out, designate is going to preemptively thin out the deck by negating call by the grave for the rest of the turn here. Negate the finger, sure. I'll pop the ash instead. That does not trigger any effect here. Summoning our Diablo Star to then set up into the back row. We want it to be used next turn. Will there even be a next turn to use it? Raisa not being summoned to the same column as the Dark as the Droll now locks you out of further adding cards from the deck to the hand. But we're going to reveal a fire to summon a fire from the deck to summon the other copy of Raisin to then wipe out the Dark. And with that open field, we have over 11,000 damage taking this into a game two. Vanquish Soul using Diablo Star. That's something. But we saw Vanquish Soul use Zodiac after the ban list, but then they took it out. They started using Fenrir, then Fenrir got limited to one. Is this a temporary engine we're just trying out? Or is this the real deal? 
know why the trap is so sticky. I'm sure you're playing only one, but you keep on opening it. Now, ashing the snake eye ash. Ash the ash, yes. Imperm the ash, ash the ash. You definitely want to do that because adding the poplar is not going to be good. We're going to, good for the opponent that is. We are sending the oak to summon our Diablo star, Black Witch, setting up the sinful spoils to send a card to be controlled to the grave to then summon a level one fire from the deck. You ashed my ash, so I summoned Poplar through a different way. So we just played right through that disruption. Magician Soul sending a Diablo star from the deck to summon itself, and we're not using its effect to send the field spell to at least draw one. That's kind of interesting. Poplar equipping itself into the back row after being sent to the grave. Ash is going to send the Poplar plus itself to summon from the deck a Flame Burge Dragon. Flame Burge Dragon is not activating to equip a card because we're going to make a Promethean Princess first, which will then trigger the Flame Burge to summon two level one fires from the graveyard, triggering the Oak to reborn another level one fire onto the field, using the effect of the Promethean Princess to summon the Flame Burge back onto the field. And then we're going to be linking them off into a Sunlight Wolf. We summon to where the Sunlight Wolf is pointing to, we get to add a Fire Monster in the Grave back to our hand. Recycling our Snake Eye Oak, it could have been an Ash if we had one. Now we're finally using the Flame Burge to equip the Mascarina into the back row to then be summoned during the opponent's turn to then link off during the opponent's turn, using the Wanted to return a card back into the deck to draw into our random wa draw one. This is going to be our Mascarina summoned during the opponent's turn here. Something like this could also, you know, not do so well against Maxi because your special summoning to then further special summon, that's at least a draw two against Maxi. We are now using the Stake Your Soul, revealing a dark to summon a dark from the deck. We're using Mascarina right here, right now, to link off into an Apollo USA. That's what it's looking like to me. Yes, it is. Triple monster negate. There is the Mad Love, which will activate on summon and the Promethean Princess is actually chain link blocking the Apollo, which it wasn't optional. In fact, we didn't have to activate it. We'd have to say no, and then you could Apollo negate. So get ready on that pop. It is a targeting pop, which leads you into potentially getting countered by a Caesar Valius or the, uh, the Borger, but we then have Apollo to negate you trying to return it back to the hand. So maybe this was the optimal usage of our Promethean Princess. Yup. It's going through. Also, the Flame Burge being sent to the graveyard for the Mascarina, triggering the fact to summon two level one fires from the grave. <laughs> you need Max C on both turns. You need it for your turn. You need it on their turn. They are special summoning on both turns like crazy. Get popping. It, it, we're not done special summoning. So Promethean summon. Mascarina was summoned. The level ones are summoned. And then we could trigger the effect of the Ambo Whale to summon. Yup, we're special summoning again. Had we max seed here, this would have been draw one, two, three. Uh, it was like draw three, draw four. I, I've lost count on how many special summons. We're grabbing, uh, what? Did people play this crappy card? We'll read that later. We have Apollo USA negate the raisin. And because you have summoned five times on my turn, I'm using Nibiru on my own turn in response to your Apollo USA which Apollo cannot negate another monster effect within the same chain. It can only activate once, so despite it having triple negate, can only use one of them. Wipe it up. Damn. Wait. You nibiru but I also have Nibiru. You summoned one, two, three, four. You're on four summons. Okay. <laughs> you nibiru me, but I will Nibiru you also, is what it looks like is going to happen. Because you summoned... That triggers my Flame Burge to summon itself onto the field from the back row. And the Poplar is going to equip the other Flame Burge in the grave into our back row to be used again during the next turn. The recursion of Snake Eyes is insane. So much summoning and adding and reborning. We have the Diablo Star setting up the Wanted. We are now Nibiru-able. Uh, when are we going to Nibiru? Are we Nibiruing? Right? Uh, we're going to wait. Making a Mascarina. Okay. So, yeah, waiting worked out. Now, we Nibiru. Back-to-back <laughs> -back Nibiru. Nibiru versus Nibiru. Tribute the field again. And because the original attack of the token is zero, the, it does not add its attack onto the newly summoned token. So what do we have here? The sinful spoils of betrayal betraying us again. It's garbage here. It's not doing anything, and it can't do anything. 
All right, Snake Eyes, this is your game to win right here, right now. Oak Reborn, a monster from the graveyard or banish, which will be the Ash. Ash on summon, add from the deck a Poplar. Poplar, when added, summon itself onto the field. When summoned, search your deck for a Sinful Spoils or a Snake Eye card. That will be the Sinful Spoils, as we said there. We're going to be adding a Diablo Star. Wait, actually, it works. It works. This is not garbage. I go back on that. This will send the Diablo Star from your hand. So we could send it from the hand to negate a card in the field, then trigger the Diablo Star to summon itself back on the field by sending a card we control to the graveyard, which we don't have. We have a token, so we can't send a token to the grave to summon the Diablo Star back, but we do have a negate. But what is a negate really going to do here? We're both playing the negate trap. Now, what the heck? This will target normal spell, target a face-up monster on either side of the field, place it into the back row. That's it. Is that card really worth playing? We're going to negate it. It's so good, we're negating. Okay, boom, there you go. It must be good. Negate. The field spell is boosting up our level ones. <laughs> it still lets you activate and then it, okay, what? Oh, it's an effect, it's not a cost. The, the, the effect is to send from the hand or field to the graveyard. If you do, which you didn't, you then special summon the card. So yeah, thank you. Lethal damage thanks to the field spell, but boosting up our level ones, taking this into game three. All right, all right. Now, I have to remind you, Rescue Ace Snake Eyes is in the top eight, and I am very much excited to see how much further the deck can go throughout the tournament. We have Stake Your Soul, trying to bait out a hand trap, which we do not have. Summoning the Mad Love, Mad Love on summon, searching our deck for the Dust Devil, which can flip a card in the field face down. We have Raisin, search for the Borger, return the Raisin back to our hand, Borger, reveal a dark to draw a card, link this off into the Rock of the Vanquisher, which could add in the graveyard Borger back to the hand. And just like that, we are going to end our turn. So Mad Love had to be added back to the hand during the end phase due to the effect of Stake Your Soul. And then we had too many cards in our hands, so we had to then discard our Mad Love. Huh? Okay, so now we are required to, we are reliant on the main phase to summon from our hand our Raisin to even make the Dust Devil activatable to flip a card in the field face down. But when do we flip? Do we flip the Flame Burge? The Link Monsters can't be flipped. So is flipping even real disruption versus Snake Eyes? Let's go. Max C in the standby phase, but I got that Ash Blossom negate. I do not think so. Now, Ash on Ash is good. Is DD Crow good? DD Crow against Flame Burge could be decent, but the Flame Burge does not target. And the Flame Burge, I believe, has to summon both. You have to, you activate the effect. You have to summon two level one fires. So if you only have two level one fires and they DD Crow one of them, no summon. We got the Snake Eye Field Smell setting up the Flame Burge. Poplar is being, uh, we didn't Ash. What are we uh, doing here? What are we saving the Ash for, huh? Okay, I, I don't really understand that. We're gonna use the Rock of the Vanquisher summoning the Raisin. We are gonna be triggering the effect of the field spell to summon the Flame Burge onto the field as we then chain the Raisin to search our deck. We're not even wiping out the column. We can't chain the column wipe within the same chain of activating to search our deck because the card said so. There's the Flame Burge. Now we're wiping out the Ash. Ash be gone. We do have the effect to flip a card in the field face down. Summoning a Borger, which could burn or draw a card. Maybe we're drawing into another hand trap here. No, we are not, but we have a Floodgate. Link this off into Link Kariba. We still have the ability to flip. When are we flipping? Didi Crow being chained to the Poplar, attempting to equip itself into the back row. Low, this is not real disruption. We didn't really mess anything up here. We're going to push the Rock of the Vanquisher into the back row using, again, a card that I don't think is good. We're gonna push the Borger into the back row, but we're gonna use the Caesar to return it back to the hand instead. And with the Caesar on the field, we do not have an Earth in the hand to reveal to pop a card in the field. So Caesar, not so good. But uh, I don't know, I'd like to eat my words on this card not being good because it's actually working. It's doing something. We have Sinful Spoils sending the Link Karibo to finally, is this the correct use of Ash? Instead of ashing Ash, do we save Ash for the Sinful Spoils? Maybe that is a potentially better play. That's something I do want to investigate. Negate. Flame Burge already put a card into the back row. To battle we go, flip down that Flame Burge, and 
Snake Eye ends on nothing. I think Snake Eyes now loses, huh? They did a whole lot of something that led to nothing. Yeah, it's like uh, they do a lot of things. But then uh, what does that lead into? They don't got Little Knight, so I, I guess that does hurt the deck a lot, right? How efficiently they could get two monsters on the field. You would think that Little Knight is more important to that deck more so than others. And then with Borger being the finishing lethal damage play to just reveal an Earth and Fire, add the Pantera from the deck to the hand. Borger for game. Boom. Now there's an interesting stat as we see Vanquish Soul defeating Snake Eye. On the website, if we go to the top cards page, this is the official data from Konami, and it is the finisher rank. Borger is, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Top 10 finisher. <laughs> top 10 for finishing duels, as you saw right then and there. Very nice, very nice. That is the conclusion of the top 16. Make sure you watch the top eight grand finale and top deckless video as it's gonna be starting with Rescue Ace versus Rescue Ace. Both of them playing, hopefully, the full Snake Eyes package is what I'm thinking, the only way to really play the deck. And wow, I am shocked that the deck is doing this well. Hajime.